Hi, my name's James Novak, and this is a tutorial that will show you how to create a mashup, which is basically just trying to mash two different STL files together, in this case, using some T-Rex models. So the first thing we're going to do is download the low poly T-Rex from Pinshape, and we're also gonna add another file for the, um, the skull of the T-Rex, which we'll provide some links to. And what we're going to use is Autodesk Mesh Mixer, which is, a, which is a free piece of software. It allows you to manipulate STL files really well. So importing firstly the low poly T-Rex, pretty cool model that you can see on screen there. Now I just need to quickly change the units of this, which will just mean that when I'm moving things around, the movements are much smaller little steps rather than big jumps. We want to get this quite accurate. We then need to import our skull model. Um, so we're going to append that to this file rather than start a new file and just grabbing the skull of the T-Rex and just select yes for this option that pops up. So what I'm moving on screen is the, um, the object browser, which is a bit like if you're familiar with Photoshop, the layers window allows you to switch the models on and off and select which ones you're working with at any particular time. And you'll obviously notice the two models are completely different scales and orientations and that's pretty normal if you're going to do the mashup. Who knows what software these, these products were, were modeled with. So using Edit Transform will allow you to move the model around so you can rotate, you can move the X, Y, Z coordinates using those arrows. And if you click and drag on that white dot in the middle, it'll just scale the whole model in one go, which is nice. So what we're going to firstly do is just get our skull a little bit closer to the size and location that we want it in the end. The next step I'm doing is selecting the low poly model in my object browser and using the plane cut tool. So the plane cut tool is nice and straightforward. It'll just take a slice right through whatever model you select and slice one section away. So I want to create a slice pretty much just following the bottom line of the teeth of the low poly model. So same sort of transform controls just to get that into place. And there we go. That's a preview. Click accept when you're happy and that will slice away the top of the head and automatically create a flat fill in what's left over. So that's still a nice watertight model there. But you can see there's some little tips left over from the teeth. So if you go to the Sculpt tool and go to the brush that says Reduce, what that'll do, it'll, it's a really, I found a, a nice simple way to, to kind of get rid of these little messy areas. So you just need to go along and click on each point and it, it really cleans up very well. So a few clicks there. So all of those little messy points are gone and I haven't really changed the model at all using that brush. Okay, time to go back to the skull and this is gonna probably be one of the more time consuming steps of this process. So back to the transform and this is where we need to fit the skull as close as possible. This is kind of the final fitting of the skull. So a little bit of the, you know, moving it into place, some playing around with scale go getting that pretty close so you'll notice that some pieces of the skull stick out sort of the tips of the teeth are sticking through and the back area of the skull seems to stick through at the back don't worry about those things at the moment we're going to trim those away and push and pull them as we need later on it's very rare that you'll find two files that kind of fit together perfectly that's getting pretty close a little bit wonky still let me fix that up Okay, so what we can do, that, that's the scaling of one direction. So just scaling it in, in, in sort of making the head narrower, a little bit more of a rotate to get that looking centered. I think that's looking pretty good now though. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Click on accept. Now we just repeat one of the same steps as before using the plane cut. So this is now going to be done to the skull section and we're just going to trim away all of the pieces that are just inside of the low poly model. So that'll clean up a lot of the, those, the, the teeth and things that are sticking through. Now it's important that this isn't above the low poly model. You want to make sure it's just inside so that when we fit, join these things together later on, there's no gaps hidden in there that aren't going to 3D print. Now we get to one of the really fun tools, which is Sculpt. So we're going to change our brush to the flatten brush. 
And if you imagine this now as a brown piece of clay, which it almost looks like on screen, and we're using our thumb to go in and push pieces of that model in place. So this is where the object browser window is really important again, to make sure you're doing it to just the, the, the models that you want to manipulate. So in this model, I'm just pushing those, I guess they're cheekbones, pushing those inside the low poly model. So it looks a little bit more fitted. And then we're going to change our brush and use the draw brush. And draw will basically pinch out sections of the model or inflate them almost, as you can see on screen there. So what I'm doing, you know, that, that skull model came in with some flat sections, which might have been to make it sit on a desk. And I don't want those. I want, them to, I want the model to look a little bit more natural. And this draw brush works really well. So you can see I'm just filling out anything that looks a bit too flat, trying to make it look a bit more organic and like it's designed to fit the low poly model, like it was built there in the first place. On the left, you'll also notice a few options that you have with this brush. You can change the strength of it, the size of it, a few different things in there. So try playing with those settings. If, if everything's moving too slow, just increase the strength. Um, you might need to change your brush size to increase or decrease the detail as I've done just there. So this section, I've sped up the video just slightly, just because it's a little bit boring to watch. All I'm doing is I'm now fleshing out or pulling out sections of the skull um, obviously these two models are two different types of models. One is very sort of anatomically correct, while the other is a little bit more cartoonish and playful. So we need to puff out the skull a little bit so that it looks like it's actually the skull of this low poly model. So this is using the draw brush again, and it only takes a couple of minutes to get right. Now this last step is to join the models. I'm happy with both of them. So in the object browser, I hold shift, select both, and I'll have this option to union the two models together, which is what's happening on screen. And now you'll notice the object browser just has one model in it. That's our final model, no separate part. So this is one stitched together solid object. And it's always really important to right at the end before you export this to just check for any errors. So if you use the analysis tool and the inspector, this is what you'll see. So in my model, I've got about four little holes or gaps or something that's not quite right. And normally if you click on auto repair all, that will be completely fixed for you and all of your problems will go away. Click of a button. Just exporting that as an STL file and that is ready to 3D print. So here's the end result. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed this process and good luck with your mashups.